Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 93, first one of 2016. Hope you had a wonderful new year, um, if you've done that yet. Um, more and more I think about it, more and more I think I like the Chinese New Year. It seems to fit better with the way I think things. It's like, yay, the new year. I was sick and stayed at home. So, there. Hope you guys had something more exciting than I did. But we're back, Wix online meeting. We have a lot of excitement going on, especially in these final days before the... Uh, patch Tuesday of January, which if you don't know what that means, go back to our last meeting and refresh yourself. So, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that are unable to join us today. We have a small bench today. Phil's going to have to be doing double duty. Um, usual agenda, typical agenda, I guess you'd say. We'll do triage, and then we'll do a pull request review of uh, this number, that this pull request out there that I pulled out. Um, there's a bunch of them that are less interesting that will get integrated soon. I thought this one might be fun to walk through. And then we'll do the usual questions, comments, reactions, things that people want to talk about. All right, cool. That's all the agenda stuff. Let's go do real work. Bob, you ready for triage? Uh, I think so. It's our all first right. time on GitHub. I know. This is the first time. Look at our bright, shiny UI that has, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Um, we actually have a fair number of bugs. 13, I think, right? 10 plus yeah. 2? Uh, so we're going to learn our way a little bit in doing this. The query, if you want to follow along at home, is um, is an issue and has no label. Uh, the way this works is new bugs, when they're opened, um, do not get labeled by people because people can't add them. Only members of the uh, managing group can do that or whatever. makes me a little sad that people can't open it and say this happened in Wix 3.8 without having to write text, but it is what it is. Um, so we will go through anything that has no labels, including those that uh, are closed. That might feel a little weird to start off with, except that this will show us the issues that were opened and closed before they were ever uh, triaged. So basically happened within the time span of a week, or in the case of recently, two weeks, because we were off for the holidays. Or no, longer than that, three, three, three weeks? I don't know, whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah, okay. three, or, three or four weeks. So a few things happened um, in that. So this will allow us to take a look at those issues that popped up and disappeared and go, hmm, maybe we should look at um, those things. So that's a nice thing, just in case something's left over or we can just nod our heads and go, oh, cool, that was fixed. Uh, so as usual, I think we'll start at the bottom and we'll work our way rolling along from there. Cool? That works for me. All right, so start at the bottom. Heat crash when harvesting native com DLL. That doesn't surprise me. There's all kinds of goofy things wrong with heat. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, I would. We can put this in 3x and label it with heat and declare it victory. Someone needs to go hunt this down. Agreed. I am in complete agreement. Except wow, look wait. at that. And now I can see what Bob is doing. 3.8. No, 3x. No. Yes, that makes yeah. more sense. That sounds better. All right. There so we go. This is going to be a little trippy that I can actually see it updating on my screen. I'll have to get used to that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess I'll get to see how far behind Bob gets a little bit. Yes, you me. will. Um, rebuild custom action project can delete compiled assemblies. Cool. So... There's something um, goofy in the custom action project builds, rebuilds. I guess that wouldn't surprise me. You skipped one. Did I? All right. Yeah. Well, That's fine. We'll go back. I'll make sure I don't miss it. Oh, they're disappearing as I go. <laughs> oh, because they uh, <laughs> they have labels now. But, well, yes, and I go back, and it's going to live update on me. That's going to be kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Things I'm going to have to get used to in the new world. All right. Uh, yay, monoculture. All right, so, uh, yeah, 3x and um, DTF, right? I guess we toss the custom actions in DTF? Sure. Yeah, probably some hard handling. All right. Burn should ensure upgrade-related bundles are always planned to execute last to maintain inter-bundle dependencies. So upgrade bundles last before after add-ons and things like that. Hmm. Yep. This is nice and detailed stuff based on a bundle. Yeah. Well, it's the proposal is detailed, but I'm I'm set up actions get performed on non-upgrade upgrade types of related bundles. I, I'm I'm not sure what the 
the problem here is? The problem is that the related bundles are not ordered. This is... I understand. I actually understand the problem. I'm saying oh. the, the, that detail would be good, I think, to have in here. Okay. Fair enough. Um, would we take this in 3x? Would any bad things happen because of that? This is why I want more detail. If we do this in 3x, it's a... It's a we, we would... We would it's a huge change. We would stick the order. Yeah, right now the order is, for all intents and purposes, random. Random. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm mostly okay with the change. Um, but, again, I, I, I want to see more detail about, you know, the behavior. What's broken? What's broken today that this, this solves? We probably should order add-ons, patches, and upgrades. Probably would end up doing that just with any change to put upgrades last, but I agree. I think they should be, you know, yeah. if, if we're going to, to order, explicitly order one group, we should have an order for all of them. Yeah, I think we should, it's not upgrade and non-upgrade. We should take, I, I agree with this, we should take the relation type and we should order all the relation types then if we're going to do this. Uh, if there's patches for an upgrade, the upgrade will be on the upgrade bundle, not on the bundle that's running here. So that's deferred, Phil. To clarify within each type the order, I mean, what we have currently implemented today, but we have no order two order groups, non up yeah, so we should order all, of, if we're going to do this, we should order all of them. Yeah, so if we're going to order, we should order by all the types, and I'm, I'd have to sit and think for a while, which would be first, add-on or patches. Patches, then add-ons, then upgrades? I was going to say add-ons, then patches, and upgrades. I agree. It needs some thinking. Yeah. All right. Uh, would we take us in 3x? Um, it would stick the order. Yeah. I I, I think so. Um, I want to say it would... I want to see the change. I think this can be done, you know, uh, simply. And... As the order today is essentially random, I'm okay with this change going in. All right. Um, I am still going to ask for, you know, more detail about the actual problem. Okay. So. Um, what I meant, would a person deploy an upgrade to a bundle and then want to also deploy an add-on or a patch? Well, sure, you could have a bundle that, oh, can you have a bundle that has add-ons and patches at the same time you're doing upgrades? Probably not, because you wouldn't have a bundle with an add-on. No, that's not true, because you're going to have an add-on that will then attach itself to that newly installed bundle and a patch. So no, so that can happen. So you can, you can have all of these things. Yeah, a, a bundle and a bundle, or what is that? How do you get the POB out of that? Anyway. Bundle of bundles? A bundle of bundles. Right. So if a bundle of bundles is going to have an explicit order for doing this, and the world just gets crazy when you put a bundle that isn't related bundle to its parent. It just gets kind of kooky. But anyway, no, you can't get in a situation where you have, you know, bundle V2 being installed that already has an add-on and a patch to it on the machine. That is possible, and being upgrading V1. So it is possible to have related add-on, upgrade, and patch bundles all at the same time for a single bundle. So, yeah, if we just stick the order, then that's what this will get you. It'll be like, cool, if you're in this situation, add-ons happen before patches, patches happen before upgrades, or something else. See there, I do agree. Upgrades should probably be last. Although, well, yeah. 
if you apply a patch, that technically applies to the upgrade, and then you uninstall the upgrade, you're just wasting time. <laughs> but I guess wasting time is one thing; correct behavior is another. I know. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah. So basically, this comes down to it'd be nice to be able to have we should have a definitive order for related bundles. Is what this is asking for. Yes, I remember when we first did this in Burn, explicit calling out, there will be no order of related bundles. <laughs> well. And now we're getting to the point where it's like they're doing complex behavior and stuff, so yeah. Anyway. All right. So we can toss it in 3x, depending. Um, and we tag this as Burn, and we'll just see if this comes back, right? Works for me. Now I have to be very careful. I have to keep track of where I was because when I come back, sometimes I'm see the, these didn't the last one went away. I don't know when it's going to go away and when it's going to not go away. I bet back is is going to mostly cash, but no, that I did back the first time. I thought. Mm, yes. All right. If you go to the tool site, this yes. All right. So we did this big uh, Wix tool set website update. By the way, we did this huge. We should add that to set. the agenda, dude. How did I miss that? All right, well, we're going to take a quick detour here. Um, in case you missed it, we have a whole new, cool-looking, awesome website. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I think this looks great. Um, granted, <laughs> we funded a lot of the work at Fire Giant to make it happen, but <laughs> I think it looks great. Uh, the site is much better, I think. We've already got someone said that the documentation is much easier to read if you go out to these individual pages, and to that, I have to agree. Like... Much prettier. Now, I know when we launched, we had a bug that this wasn't in a table. But anyway, I think this looks just way better than it used to. Uh, so, we have a new website. So, now that we've declared that we have a new website, and it's cool looking, I hope you agree. Um, um, building Wix. Uh, was this updated, Bob? I don't remember. Yeah. Um, so, so the I think from the thread, the uh, the problem is that in the chum, it says you need to you need to have Sandcastle and Sandcastle helper thing right, right. installed, and that's no longer true. I think Sean did that via NuGet. All right. Um, so should we just pull the stuff out of the chum? I mean, yeah, it's, I, I think we we definitely want to have this in on the website. Yeah, so seems I'm, like the right I'm place. I'm comfortable to do it. taking it out of the out of the chum, so we deduplicate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, right. It's likely you're going to get this information from the website more than you'll get it from the chum. Plus, the chum will end up being old. It'll be like for this particular version or whatever, and we'll be able to update the building of the website as it changes. Right. So, um, so yes. So I this see. bug should turn around into let's delete the stuff out of the chum. Yeah. So oh. I will assign that to myself. Sweet. Is that going to 3.11 then? Um, I wasn't sure about... Oh, yeah, I guess... It should go into a milestone to the for the chum. Okay, yeah, three eleven. Oh, now I have to like announce the stuff before I do it because. No, you weird. don't. You don't have to announce it. I just wanted. To... Oh, we're never going to get anywhere with that. Installer found here with no message. Fail. Try again. Why the installer for Wix isn't generating a letter? Oh yeah, this is the one. This is the, the one, most recent one. Yes. So the issue is, there's a bug open that we should have a link to the log file that we don't. Um, and this person has a lot to learn if they don't know why we didn't ship just an MSI. Um, so yeah, it's easier to be snarky. It is easier to be snarky. Uh, right. So we don't have a log file. So let's add the. Hey, we need a log file, please. And we'll go from there. We would love to fix this, and we should call out that it would be great if you could find the bug that says we should have a link to the log and all that. Just because it would be good to, we should fix that in the UI. We should build a special version of the compiler for this guy that just says compilation failed for all errors. <laughs> Sorry, now I'm just being snarky too. Um, yes, but it was funnier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see if we get a log file for this. Maybe we'll hopefully we can figure out what's going on with the install there. 
Uh, 32-bit, 64-bit flag is ignored in Regutal. Yes, I actually took a look at this code, and they're right. There is a if you pass in a certain flag to one of our functions here, you can actually bypass all the stuff that would allow it to work correctly in 64-bit. Oops. Yeah. Uh, we must not use that switch on anything that cares about 64-bit, basically is what it comes right. down to. So it's like, yeah, not so good. Um, so, yeah, we should take this 3x. Yeah. I th it's breaking-ish, but it doesn't work, so probably fine. I think so. Yeah. Light argument exception invalid with PDB. Yeah, this needs to go in 4. Something is wrong in the new file format stuff in Wix 4. So... You can toss this a four and throw it at me. Something is wrong there. Uh, Wix four visual 2005 build missing Wix variables in candle. Oh, this is a difference in his build projects. Yeah, toss this in four and throw it at me. Some other we did the big change to consolidate to Microsoft.com and targets, and something in that change got rid of passing all these variables even when there's no references or something. So let's go look at the behavior and figure out what we really want. App certification, unresolvable warnings. Oh, the major version, minor version, all this, install location. So this... I thought we had a bug on this, but... We already have a bug it. on this, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? Couldn't find it. Yeah, all right. So, yeah. So if not, then, yeah, that we should fix that bug. I don't know why they need major version, minor version, version, major, yada, yada, yada. It's like all redundant, but... Okay. Well, and they're not all required. Um, oh, option, option. Oh, Optional value. An optional value is missing. <laughs> is missing. <laughs> right. Um, I oh, think... These are warnings? Oh, warnings. They're... Well, I think either major version, minor version, or version major, version minor is required. Okay. Install location is is, is required, I thought, based on my reading of okay. that, but... That they're all called optional is kind of funny. Yes. All right. Well... I'm totally fine. So 3x and someone should, you know, could fix that. Yep. But this shouldn't be horribly bad, except install location is going to be pretty bad. Yes. And it's going to be a bit harder to do. I agree there. Although, if we fix it, that would fix the tag problem. Mm. That's true. That would be nice. Whoever, can you drop a mention in that, that whoever wants to work on this bug should take a look at the Swid tag stuff, and if they have questions, they can contact me. Cool. All right, so here's a bug that is not a bug, or that was thing found out. So here they were having a compilation error, something package being validated <laughs> requires a higher version when it's installed than it's installed on this machine. <laughs> so they had their installer version set to something that was not supported by their machine. Uh, what milestone do we put the... What, what label? Not a bug? Uh, um, pilot error? Um, what do we want to put here? Because we want it to go away. Oh, which means it needs a label? Yes. I would just say this not a bug. Okay, not a bug. I'm okay with that. New website not as clear. Yes, this was our tables did not look good in documentation. So I'm glad this person found the place of file issues. We should clear that up and do a little work to make it clear. Although the web, this bugs tracked on. Okay, well, I think I think we have the documentation. Whoops, I didn't want to click on that. Sorry. That's what it used to look like. No spaces, harder to read. Now it looks nice and pretty with a table and different things. By the way, did I mention I'm really happy with the new website? Um, anyway. No, tell us again. <laughs> I am really happy with it. So this has been solved, as we could see. Uh, Wix whip template. This was, I think, mostly Sean trying to, yeah, make sure the trying out the new flow. And noted that he can't have things assigned to himself. So yeah, this is all resolved. So I guess we put this in um, documentation or something or website and declare victory. And then the last. Yeah. One. Create MSMQ. Public MSMQ is not possible. Not working as expected. Yeah, the problem is I don't. Yeah. 
I don't know if there's something magical you have to do to create a public queue. Oh, I mean, yeah. Is this, is this a bug, or is this a, a feature. missing feature? Yeah, could be. So, um, so yeah, we toss it 3x and see if anybody wants to work on it. It's interesting, yeah, we're this far along and people are still creating things in MSMQ. So, I don't interesting know. is one word for it, I suppose. I don't know what to think about that. All right, so that takes care of just those need labels, and I think we'll be good to go. Now, another thing we'll do is in the future when we have them we'll keep track of the issues that are labeled for triage. So if we hit something and we want to keep it around for the next week, we'll mark it as triage and then we'll come back to it. For now, it's this is our favorite one, no label. Dun, dun, dun. So these all go away. Cool. I have to create a couple of labels there. That's what I guessed. All right. So carrying on, carrying on. We will now return to GitHub, and we'll do a pull request review. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get rid of this interstitial slide eventually, but it's a nice place. I guess we could stand here for a second, let Bob catch up on any issue, things that he want to type. If anybody wants to mention anything else about the bugs before we go do a pull request review before we call the meeting good. Um, so I think we'll go back to doing pull requests. So... There's a lot of them out there to pick from. A bunch of them are small bug fixes that honestly weren't terribly interesting at all. So I tried to find something that uh, um, it would be nice to start with. Uh, it was, you know, something interesting. So this came from Bob, um, a tool to create the C++, the C code that you need to wire into ThemeUtil seamlessly, um, which is pretty nice. I think this came out of frustration of not having of having to do this manually. Yeah, now, there are a couple of arrays. I mean, you can see in the results certainly as well. There are a couple of arrays that you have to keep in sync. Right. You know, one is an ID and one is a name, and you know, one at a time. It's not a big deal. Suddenly, you decide you need to add a couple of controls though, and you have to keep them all in the right order and switch between two different arrays, and then once you have, oh, I don't know, 50 or 60 controls yeah. in a theme, you know, it's tougher to keep them keep them all together. So. Right, right. Um, random note, is this the, the syntax that will get Visual Studio to think it's a tool or generated by a tool? There is a syntax that... Is there? Interesting. Um, so. I just thought it was funny to say that it was generated by a tool when <laughs> I was still doing it by hand. <laughs> yeah, so um um I think the res x files do it or something. Anyway, it helps Visual Studio ends up not marking as many things um as errors or whatever and huh? cool. Slightly small behavior. So anyway, this does theme load controls, theme get page IDs. Right. So this wires up the code for the page IDs. And then here's a show page. So you'll have the, the page is is uh if by adding these couple of functions we can hide all of the the variables. Right, so, right, they, they got live it. So a module, they don't have to it. be global got inside it. your right. app. Yes, very good. The double curly braces is cute. That's because it's processed by C Sharp, and it's a format thing. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes. This, it's kind of weird reading it. You're like, whoa. It is. <laughs> the funny thing is I think it's probably valid C as well. Uh, yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, about that's here, cool. Though. I don't know about here, though. Um, no, that probably would not work. <laughs> but close. Um, so the one thing is that this this naming of pages and such is different. Um, like it's mixed ca or it's Pascal cased rather than all cased, all caps. That is true. Which seems to be more Win32 all caps underscores. What is it? Snake case cap snake case, whatever it is. I don't know what the name for it is. Um, 
Oh, but these are hidden, so you don't actually see them. Oh, no, but you do see pages. No. Yeah, you do see pages. Controls are... No, no, the controls are, are the same. They're visible as well in the header. All right. Um, do, do, do. I don't see them in the header, but maybe... Oh, that's an H, right. Yes, there they are. So... Don't know. Do we want to be more... Because it doesn't seem you will use all mixed case. Or, I mean, caps case with underscores? Mixed case. Team, team Noodle, for its own stuff, does, yes. The, so the reason I went with um, something a little prettier um, is that all of these end up with the names inside the the theme itself, uh, which are you know, tend to be your typical uh, Pascal yeah. case identifiers. Nobody writes them in all caps in. You should write your XML and caps. Pretty ugly. Who does that? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. All right. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Do, 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 do. This is a command line tool. This is parsing command line. Yeah, it's that pattern of set all these things internally and, yep, have an object that handles all this. Very good. This is all very standard. Response file. Woohoo! It does response files too. Cool. Um, yes. Where do I get that from? Yeah. Well, according to this, you probably got it from uh, Wix toolset, which makes sense. All right. Is the ResX the one that gets generated? No, this is the one that's actually the data file. I think if I pop this open, which I don't know, I want to do that, um, you would see the generate file thing. It's Maybe I'll do it at the end. See if I hang my browser. Yada yada yada. Standard stuff. We will run on CLR two if we want, if we can. For thing. All right. Now we're actually. In the, Messaging stuff, good, uses all the standard Wix initializations, calls the run, does the command line, shows error. This is a very common pattern for getting all of our help files presented with the header, with the copyright message, and all that good stuff. And then finally, we get to actually go in and doing something here. Catch exceptions so we don't have message box popping up out of executables inside your build lab if you ran this in the build lab, things like that. So if you don't have an output file, you get that one. Um, if you, you're taking out a CPP file. Uh, so you can have a pre-compiled header, or you must have a pre-compiled header. You must have a pre-compiled header. If you don't give a different one, we'll name it standard AFX. Which you may not, if like you don't have that, then... If, if you're projects say use something like precomp.h, you can specify it on the command line. And if you don't use anything? The defaults to standard AFX. And if you don't use anything? Like if you don't have any precompiled header at all? You can't avoid having some include. That's what it's looking like. Yep. Um, you can go back up to the template, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Um, although, truthfully, you're you're pretty much always going to have to include a header. Because of Windows? Or no, because, because of theme at all? Yeah. All right. Yeah, the CPP file must include a header, so... Okay. Um, okay. Um, you could argue whether it should be called the pre-compiled header file name or not. But. That's what I was sitting here staring at. It should be pre-compiled header, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop it here just so I don't lose it. Okay. Typically, of course, that's the one you're going to include. Yes, I want to add that command line switch. <laughs> yeah, it's... All right, we load XML, which is the theme file. We go through all of the descendants that have a name attribute. We get the controls that are in a page. That does they're not. Right. Oh, they're, they're, they're not, not a page. page. Because they all have funky names. They, they have, have names, names. Than page. And then we have page, all right. And we don't have anything else besides controls and pages today. All right. Um, 
oh, get template from resource, very good. All right, those are stored as resources, very good. Uh, join the deck, all right, get the declarations from those controls, join them with new lines, very good. And then we spit this stuff back out after we format it, cool. Um, then we get more resources, oh, for the CPP files, we do the same thing, and we write them out. Okay. <laughs> the only thing I'm sitting here thinking is it might be good to do all the writing at the end. Um, not that it's going to matter much, but just if there's any errors in this process, then you wouldn't have these files floating around. But eh, probably not worth it. Get template, right? I don't, think, I don't think that you can get errors other than I/O errors right. at that point. That's kind of where I was sitting at. Controls, colon, names, and all that kind of stuff. Page and all that. All right, cool. Here's a CS proj. Uh, I don't think I'm going to see. Usually I don't see much in here, right? There's the embedded resources that I was looking for. Command line. We have a designer, a ResX file for the version information and stuff. Go off and directly reference Wix. Uh, this is probably the wrong place, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Well, no, I mean, it works for me. Do you recall whether we use hit paths or project references? Well, it just depends. Yeah, it depends. Do you want your project to rebuild the other projects or not? Oh, interesting. So sometimes we don't do that because some of our projects are less uh, friendly about rebuild than others because they're really complicated. Yeah, what what uh, occurs to me, I don't know, what, what's a good path to use in that case, then? Uh, given, given, I mean, do you, go, do you go looking at Wix root, blah, blah, blah? Yeah, or, well, or a build folder, or whatever the default. Oh, okay. Whatever build folder. I, well. Sorry, I haven't looked. I've, I've been managing the Fire Giant build folders a lot lately, so I have those names. I don't remember what the Wix names are, but whatever the Wix names are for the build folder, the output folder. Well, okay. The build folder for these things, which is actually the same as this one, so that's pretty easy. Anyway, something like that. Yeah, you, just, it, it, you have to be careful, because it can't be a relative path, because the folders can get re redirected. So use those variables. Those variables have to get redirected. Everything uses those variables. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Or properties. Hey, a solution file. Sure, I suppose. It's a little overkill for this thing, but all right. Could I add to the tool? Useful when you're working on it, but... Yeah, I suppose. Um... Oops. Now you know where I found it. I'm breaking up my Canadian there. Um, for the record, I'm not Canadian. Just kind of. You you live close. We both live close to Canada. Yeah, I wonder who's closer. Uh, you are. Oh, okay. I can't leave a comment. Now. Oh wait, actually, now I have I have to look. I could actually get. I can go straight east into Canada. <laughs> that's look at the map. I I believe you, but that's just kind of crazy. Um, straight east. <laughs> I can go straight east, and I think, uh, yeah. I'm curious how I run into if I go straight east long enough. A um, couple lakes in the way. Cabra boat. All right. Yeah, so there we go. Found a few small things, minor things that could be picked up in another drop of this pull request, and I think we'll be able to take it. It'll be a nice little tool. So then the question is, can we integrate it into smarter things like you know, every time you edit your theme file, automatically regenerate these things in Visual Studio or whatever that tool name of that thing is and such like that. Future, future things uh, to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's not supposed to be very hard. Like, you just say so and you add yeah, it as a list of a tools. file generator. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, might be a nice thing to have. Very, cool, I added my theme file. Oh, these things were automatically updated. You're like, sweet. That actually would be pretty, pretty nice. Okay. Questions, comments, things people want to talk about. Uh, we do have an exciting week coming up. Stay tuned for that. Um, much discussion and things will be done. Um, other than that, you know, new website. That was much excitement. Can't believe I.
blanked on the whole thing that we launched a new website over the break, but it's cool. Um, anything else? Anything else people want to talk about? Small group today. They're all quiet out there. Although Phil's been pulling his weight. Good on Phil. Uh, didn't really have any debate on the issues. They're all pretty straightforward. Um, things to do, what need to be done. Um, all right. Phil's typing, so I'm going to give him time. Phil in space. <laughs> all right, so Phil will need help getting it all pushed to GitHub, but we'll see how that goes. We can do that. All right. Otherwise, you have anything I else? Gave up on, I gave up on GitHub Desktop, so. Oh, did you? Used it for a while. Yeah. Tried. Never just clicked for you? Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Turns out, turns out, I think that your your Git environment is very very personal. Oh. Uh. I can't stand the one you use. The one I, I use? Yeah. PowerShell and things like that? Right. Huh. Well, no, I, command line, well, that part of the problem is command line is how I learned it, so therefore it's where I'm yeah, the right. most comfortable. It's where I do most Except of my work. for, like, browsing things, and that's where you need your, you know, yes. your Diffing. GUI. Yes. Diffing. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I, yeah. I think I, I use source tree for all my diffing, and that's it. And then everything else I do on the command line. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, all right. Cool. Well, I'm just going to leave this here. You guys have a wonderful week. Until next week, uh, you too can leave the Wix toolset website um, up on your up on your screen. Um, and the cool people use it as their background. Uh, well, I, I use Fire Giant as my background, which I also think is a cool logo. I mean, well, okay, then do a you know two page, two page uh, slideshow. <laughs> slideshow, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I like that logo. It's gigantic, huge slideshow. Interesting. I guess I could. Yeah, I could do the you know and put it on shuffle bump, even. Bump, bump, bump. Probably a little Wait. slower. That would drive me pretty crazy. Yeah, that would. Yeah, that'd be bad. Yeah, and then, I don't know, what would you rotate, every 30 minutes? I think that's the default, yeah. Every hour? I guess you could, it, could be, it could be the clock. You could do it like every hour, be like, bing, bing, you know, be like, because it didn't make no noise. Like, boom. I don't know. I might try it. Now that, now that you've said it, you got it in my head, I might try it. And get the logo and have it bounce back and forth. Maybe I'll do that. And then I could create a video of it, and you can just sit there watching it. Oh, that's what we could do. We create a gigantic, huge, long video. All right, we're losing Phil, which means I've now babbled on long enough because he's not going to ask another question. And Ronnie's being quiet out there. So on that note, uh, until next week, take it easy. We'll have some excitement in the middle of the week, and then hopefully Friday will be very uneventful and we'll be, like, chilling and having a nice good time with a, a larger bench. So until then, take it easy. Bye. <laughs>